Coach, it looked like you had them right where you wanted them. You overcame everything. You're up nine, kind of running your stuff and milking the clock, and looked a lot like you know last year's game. How did it get away? Just didn't execute. Turned the ball over on our press breaker um, a number of times. Uh, made some errors um, coming out of the press breaker, and um, missed a couple free throws there at the end. There's an old saying: basketball players got to play. Just for whatever reason, I've said that a bunch this year, we just didn't find a way to, to capitalize on the opportunity we had tonight. So I thought we played hard. I thought it was a, you know, a hard-fought struggle in the first half. I thought it was intense. We didn't shoot the ball very well. I thought we came out in the second half and played very well offensively and um, you know, battled back and showed a lot of heart. And uh, like you said, I think we were up uh, nine with about six to play, and we were milking the clock down, and we were up, uh, what, three with seven seconds to go. And um, he makes a heck of a shot with the guy in his face. Did you think about uh, calling for to foul him? No, you know what, I, you know, I think there's two schools of thought on that um, all the time. And, and what you worry about in a situation is, in a situation like that, if you foul him and he shoots a three and makes it, that's the only way you can lose the basketball game. Um, and so, no, I did not think about fouling him. Uh, my philosophy has always been is, is make him shoot a contested shot. And he shot about a, I don't know, you guys tell me, a 20-footer, 22-footer. I mean, he was behind the three-point line, obviously, uh, with a guy hanging on him. And, and he made it. So uh, you got to give Anthony Thomas uh, credit for uh, making that shot, second shot. What do you talk to the guys about in the locker room after the game? Not a lot. You know, I, uh, I'm not sure there's a whole lot I can say to make them feel better at this point. I'm not sure there's a whole lot they can say to me to make me feel better or to our fans. Uh, that's a, <laughs> it's a gut-wrenching loss, I'll tell you. Um, you know, sometimes it's best not to say anything. I didn't say a lot today. <clears throat> Coach, uh, Hobson was pulled there late in the overtime. It seemed like he was fairly He didn't upset. execute the play that was called. How do you guys start to right the ship? Keep doing what we've been doing. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I don't know if there's one right answer. Um, but, you know, I, I think we just got to keep, keep plugging along. And I you've heard me say this a lot, but, but um, it, you know, <laughs> it, it, do what we do. You know, and, and uh, system and run is good. Just gotta keep going. Can't lose your fight, and you know that's gonna be my job over the next two days is to get this team back um, emotionally, uh, because you know there's no one more hurt in the locker room than than them, the guys who put it on the floor every night. Did Stephen cramp up in the second half? Or yes, he did. He cramped up again, and, and we didn't have him the last five minutes of the game, the last five minutes of the time. Do you think maybe the expectations got set a little bit too high when looking at a, a team that's, that's that's coming to get that still has a lot of pieces that haven't played together that much? I don't know. You know, um, I really haven't thought about that to be honest with you. Uh, you know, I I expect a lot out of this team, and I expect a lot out of myself and our basketball program. I've said that since day one here. Um, I don't know. I mean. That's a good question. I don't know if I know the answer to that because I don't look at it as the expectations. What were the expectations? Well, my expectations were uh, to compete for a WAC title, and and that's what the teams was too. So, uh, you know, I, I don't. I'm not sure I know the right answer to that one or have an answer for that 